And now um, I'm going to ask uh, Dr. Bernie Kiley if she could introduce Professor William Benji to see how we might apply those to our present situation. Dr. Kiley. Thank you. William Vinci to you. Now I know for many of you, you know him very well, but I think there are a number of people here today who may not know him so well. So I think it's worth doing a proper introduction. William didn't want me to do this, eh? But I, I think it's a good idea. Um, William is the Regents Professor of Laws at Trinity College Dublin, and he was formerly the legal, Special Legal Advisor on Family Law Reform to the Irish Department of Justice and Research Counselor to the Law Reform Commission. He has been a member, has served two terms on the Irish Human Rights Commission, and as you can only serve to come to the end of that. He has authored and co-authored books on climate international law, torts and family law, and he organises the annual workshop on constitutionalism for African Chief Justices and Senior Judiciary, held at the law school, and this is now his 10th year. He is, as most of you know, the legal advisor to the Bullock campaign, and has been extraordinarily influential in helping secure the passage of the referendum in 1983, which was the referendum that inserted um, legal protection for the unborn into the Irish Constitution, and which has been sort of the instrument which has enabled us to keep Ireland effectively abortion free. <laughs> As you know, he's a very uh, regular contributor to radio and TV on all life-related matters. And so I'm delighted now to invite William to address us on some of the current problems that we're facing. Thank you. Uh, I'm sure your hearts went to stone when you heard the words law and address there, but I give you a guarantee, I give you two guarantees. First of all, I will stop speaking at 20 past the hour, that is in 11 minutes time. And second of all, Joe has given a promise that he will uh, bring down the proceedings at half past four, but we'll give trains to catch a number of you do, so we can change the time realities. So in that 10 or 11 minutes, uh, we're going to go fast, but mention a few things to you. First of all, it is a huge pleasure to be here. It's great for morale, is it not? Because uh, one is in the company, not just people who see the world the same, but I have to say, I find I'm in the company really nice, good, committed people, people that you would want to meet in other walks of life rather than simply just this specific area. And, you know, we've heard some really inspirational um, presentations, Ryan's presentation, most interesting, challenging in a whole range of areas and given in a wonderfully um, upbeat, uh, forthright sort of way. We also have uh, Ronan. Um, I think it's great, it's a, it's, a, it's a real privilege for us in Ireland that we have Ronan in the Senate. He has done such a fantastic job, completely <laughs> This. I think it's fair common to say that, uh, especially in the last year or so, Ronan would have been seen, he would have been slotted as media tend to do, understandably, they have to cope with people and see where they're coming from. Ronan would have been slotted in a particular uh, slot, but they realise just what a formidably interesting person Ronan is now, politically, how broad is his agenda, how diverse it is, how strong his associations uh, on a range of causes are, and I think, I think really there's very much more to come there, and I'm looking forward to it. Now, I have to say, Ronan did something which I thought was very good, and is a message that has come from other speakers as well, uh, which is that uh, we should liaise with people who don't necessarily agree with us or agree with us fully on uh, the life issue, uh, because only good things can come out of that. That liaison, not because of any cynical reasons of strategizing, but just simply the human content of meeting people whom you know and get to respect, it does change people's views. There's not the slightest doubt about that. If you know and respect somebody, it's impossible not to respect what they say in a clearer fashion. Also gratified and upbeat uh, about recent developments, not getting into the specifics of the recent referenda, I think the fact that on the um, inquiries referendum, people showed that they were able to make up their mind on a sober issue and make up their mind against uh, political presentation, I think it's fair to say, and in the absence of very strong or sustained media consideration, that people did in a considered way from constituency to constituency make up their mind on that issue and form an independent view. I think that augurs well for future areas of law and referenda that may be ahead uh, at time to come. It's also true to say that there are good things, some good things, some bad things, of course, but some good things on the international legal front. Um, there have been two recent decisions, just to mention them to you. One of them got uh, a reasonable amount of publicity. It sounds boring and sounds technical, but actually is of quite considerable importance. It was a decision of the European Court of Justice, just within the last 
five weeks or so, in a case called Brussels and Greenpeace. Greenpeace were on the right side of an issue here, which was that they opposed the patentability of embryonic life. Very important point. It's not just about science and business, uh, though it's very much about those things. It's about the respect to be given to human life in its earliest stages. And the European Court of Justice held, interpreting a particular measure, that human life begins at fertilization, and patentability is out in terms of embryonic human life, and that if scientific experimentation or scientific research is carried out integrally, integrally related with such a patent, it is also not permitted. Very important judgment of the European Court of Justice just five weeks ago. More recently, and this, uh, I'm afraid, shame to say, I hadn't noticed this, uh, it is the 3rd of November, it was brought to my attention by uh, John O'Reilly, an important case of H and Austria, where just very recently the European Court, just a couple of days ago, the European Court of Human Rights held that Austrian law, the area of uh, assisted human reproduction, which had a number of controls, which are indirectly relevant to uh, the kind of cause that we believe in, uh, it sustained uh, the consistency of the Austrian law with the European Convention. Both good decisions from our point of view, specifically, in showing that the two European courts, the Court of Justice and the European Court of Human Rights, are capable of delivering judgments uh, that we like, rather than necessarily that we do not like. That's all good news. Let's get to the position which is, uh, you know, in the Irish context, which we have to concern ourselves with. Um, it's a long debate, it's barely mentioned going back many years. I suppose the abortion debate uh, has been part of human experience forever and will continue to be so. It's a debate that is never resolved definitively. Uh, each generation has to work out how they are to respond to the issues presented by it. And we're living in our generation. But um, I think it's fair to say that, you know, that the Irish constitutional and legal framework uh, goes back to 1983 in terms of the uh, pro-life amendment of 1983. Uh, as you know, the uh, Supreme Court uh, produced an interpretation in 1992, which is problematic from our point of view. Um, but let's get more recently. We had a decision of the European Court of Human Rights in A, B, C and Ireland. You notice that decision just uh, coming up to a year ago, last December. And in A, B, C and Ireland, uh, essentially what the European Court said, and it's not good news, but it's not disastrous news, uh, is as follows. They said every state in Europe is entitled to form its own policy in relation to the protection of unborn life. They don't have to have an abortion regime. They're free to have an abortion regime. They're free to have a liberal abortion regime if they so desire. But such a uh, law as they do have must have clarity. And the view taken by the... Um, European um, Human Rights Court was that the existing law in Ireland, uh, following the X decision of 1992, lacks clarity because it lacks legislative guidance. Now, does that mean, as many people have said in newspapers, many advocates for legalized abortion have said, that we must legalize abortion? No, it does not say that, and the court does not so hold. What the European Court of Human Rights holds is that it's for Ireland to make up its own mind on what its policy in this area should be. But whatever its policy is, whether it's total prohibition on legalized abortion, whether it's a some degree of abortion or lots of abortion, whatever the, the solution or conclusion taken in Ireland is, it should have clarity. That's what the European Court said. It did not say we must legalize abortion. So whenever you read those slogans and headlines saying ABC in Ireland said we must legalize abortion, we must introduce legislation, it did not say that. And at the moment, as you know, um, the uh, government is uh, contemplating making some appointment to a body of experts um, who will advise on this particular issue. The argument of the pro-life campaign is that this should be a matter of democratic input. Um, there are obviously, it's very wise to listen to experts in terms of medical um, expertise in this area because it's important. May I say, in the area of medical expertise, all the evidence, all the evidence over the last 20 years uh, since uh, the X decision has flowed very strongly in favour of the stance which we adopted. There's very strong evidence, as you probably know now, uh, evidence produced in, in neutral contexts and indeed by pro-choice doctors. Huge amount of evidence at this point to show that there's a very significant impact of abortion in the area of suicidal ideation. Not that it's a good thing, but rather that it enhances the risk of suicidal ideation. The statistics are there, and as I say, the people who have made these findings are people who are not with us at all on the values question, but they say we can't deny the science in that particular area. 
That's something that we want heard. And bear in mind also, uh, again, I think many of us are aware of this fact, but why don't we trumpet it every day? Ireland is the safest place in the world for a woman to be pregnant. The statistics in terms of maternal safety in this country are way up at the top. In the top one or two or three, it depends on the year, but always up there. And the top one or two or three for the entire period uh, since we've had the pro-life amendment, Ireland is the safest country in the world uh, for a woman to be pregnant. Maternal safety rates are fantastically good, better than they are uh, indeed in many countries which do have abortion with very considerably more economic resources than our own. All of that is good. But what the ABC decision said is they say that it's for us to work out our policy in this area, uh, not that we should legislate for abortion. So do have confidence that that um, uh, interpretation of the case is correct. I give you an absolute assurance that that's a correct uh, interpretation of the case. And what we must do, therefore, in that area is lobby our politicians and have our voice heard. It's very interesting to know that uh, the pro-life campaign, and indeed all of you, uh, were active in the uh, period before the last election. Uh, there was very much a, um, a postcard campaign and an e-letter campaign. It's good to see that the whole technological um, advancement of the pro-life campaign in terms of absolutely embracing uh, contemporary modes of communication. Uh, but the thing to notice is that the politicians themselves noticed this. There was, they have commented on just how much communications they received. A particular politician mentioned uh, that in her in tray, as it were, her electronic and her physical in tray, over a sustained period, 20% of the communications which she receives are from us, from people of our point of view. That's a huge amount of influence, and it showed in the commitments made by the politicians uh, going into the uh, election, uh, just the most recent election. So it does work. That is the good news, I think it's fair to say. I'm conscious that it's now 19 minutes. Um, but I would just mention very briefly another area, which of course is the area of assisted human reproduction. This is an area that has been interpreted as beyond constitutional protection in the decision of Roach and Roach, you might remember by the Supreme Court in, at the end of 2009. Uh, that is most unfortunate that they came to that conclusion, but it doesn't tie the hands of the legislature in any way. The legislature are free to bring in any law in this area uh, that uh, it considers desirable. And obviously, we know the kinds of laws that we would wish for in this area. We want, whatever the laws may be in specific areas in the context of assisted human reproduction, we want to make absolutely sure that human life is protected and respected. I'll just say for the last 30 seconds, I think it's fair to say this, pro-life campaign. As you know, we're not life fetishists. We do not have a supreme desire that life in this uh, corporate existence that we have should go on simply longer and longer. It's not about continuity of life. It's about respect for human beings. It's about relationship. And it's really about values. It's really about do you have faith in the human person, the human being, from the very beginning to the very end, as being something of supreme importance, with a supreme destiny, worthy of being cherished and valued from the very first moment does that not have implications on what can be done to that human being? That's what we're about. We're about values. We're about respect on a radically, uh, a radically equal basis. And that's why I think it was interesting hearing what Ryan said. Ryan was talking against a background and a history and a contemporary reality of discrimination on the basis of race. We know what that has done. Um, and we know how it has affected so many societies. We are talking about something parallel in this respect in the sense of failing to see the full human rights of every human being. This is about a very important moral cause for justice. And I think it's an honor, I must say, for me to be with you, to be sharing uh, that sentiment, and let us all commit ourselves, you know, in coming weeks and coming months, to that particular very simple act of faith. Do you believe that every human being is worthy of respect and protection? I do, and I suspect you do too. Thank you very much. Koala bears spend an enormous amount of time apparently sitting and doing nothing. 
That's because they eat eucalyptus leaves and they need a lot of digestion. So we need a, a lot of rumination to kind of tease out what has just happened. It's very important. William's point that uh, A, B, and C does not mean that we have to legislate for abortion is really important because in terms of shaping the way the debate is going to unfold politically, we have to get that point out because the other side are trying to get out the points to short circuit Ed, what, what William was saying is there, a second look at the evidence, because the evidence has been chugging along downhill like a, a big train gathering speed all the time in our direction. Priscilla Coleman's study reviewed the best methodological studies um, that are available that, that factor in what might have been causing negative effects in a woman post-abortion. And she said that this is the biggest study that has ever been done heretofore with the, all those methodological controls and it's showing that abortion has significant negative effects for a significant number of women. If that is true, and it is, it undermines two things. It undermines the whole rationale of the British Abortion Act, which presupposes that the, the reason for having an abortion is that two medical practitioners are able to say, in any 100,000 cases, that uh, the continuation of the pregnancy is um, worse for the woman than a termination. In other words, the evidence now shows there's no basis for making that judgment. Both herself and Ferguson say that reviewing all the studies, whatever you might argue about in the evidence for effects that are negative for abortion, there are no effects showing a positive effect for women following abortion, which was the whole rationale that they were talking about. And the other thing is applying it, as William just did, to the Irish situation. We are saying that it will be criminally negligent just to say, oh, let's legislate along the lines of X, because the, the basis of X is now itself under question, which is that when a person has been raped and is suffering from suicidal inclination or ideation or parasuicidal behavior, that therefore the right thing, the compassionate thing, the scientific thing for that person is to provide them with access to, a, to an abortion. That is itself the very point which the evidence is not supporting. We need to get that out out to shape the ground for the debate that is coming. And that debate, of course, will involve poor old William having to come back out again and work again and again and again for us, as he has done so faithfully. And as Barry has done so faithfully. So, um, I want to say a couple of things. Uh, the first is the bad news. The bad news is that the 78-page essay on statistics, which I had spent at least a half an hour last night writing, you're not going to be able to hear it. <laughs> and it won't even be online, so I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, but seriously, the, uh, the question and answer panel, we, uh, we simply don't have time for it. The, the speakers will remain on, and uh, you can engage them one-to-one -one after we've finished. We, we really have to allow people to, we have to finish when we said we would finish. Um, there's two issues I want to just bring up. One is that uh, Christina Nilavian um, is setting up a group called Teens for Life on Facebook. So if you look up Facebook and, 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 and key in Teens for Life, and she's setting that up, so if you could go into that site and like it. And um, do you want to come up, Christian? Yeah. Say up. Yeah. <coughs> might need a... <laughs> there she is, down there. Thank you very much. So if you could like it and share it. And, and it <laughs> Other than that, I just want to kind of give my normal five-hour finishing up lecture. Um, and the, the basic point I want to make is this. When a few are left to do a lot, the danger is we end up only holding the line. It'd be crazy to do that right now. The good news is pouring in. William mentioned the anti-patenting of human embryos decision by the courts in Europe. Uh, President Obama just signed in uh, an anti-embryo amendment included in the America Invents Act. That means that if anybody's going to make any money out of stem cell research, adult stem cell research, they're going to want an area <coughs> which has a clean pedigree of not being involved in adult stem cell research to make sure that they make it. <laughs> getting late, I have to take more time. So in other words, they need a pedigree of, of non-involvement in embryonic stem cell research to safeguard any possible gains from the research they're doing. That's good news for us. There's also evidence coming in of um, ill effects related to assisted human reproduction. Trickling in, every so often you see another article uh, highlighting them. So coming back to that then, if each of us does a little, then that will ripple out involving more people. I mean, when I looked down to here, there was more people here 
this time than there was last time. Decisions are made, history is made, progress is made by those who turn up. You turned up. If you can do something small, then another person will turn up and another person will turn up. That's how stuff gets done. And what works isn't set in concrete. It changes as we go along. We've got Liam Foley down there twittering, and he's talking about we're now a trend. And I'm ashamed I haven't a clue what that means. <laughs> but I'm sure it's definitely good news. Um, and Ryan has shown us a load of imagery and a way of using imagery that is completely different from the way I would absorb. I'm, I, I, I kind of print out stuff. I know it's a terrible thing to have to admit. I print stuff off the computer. I'm one of those horrible people who's waste. I know there are, I know you can replant trees. But there are people who tell you I shouldn't be doing this. But the generation, my children, and the grandchildren, as they creep along, they aren't doing that. They're picking it up from DVDs, videos, YouTube. YouTube is where they pick up their information. And if it can't be put on YouTube, <coughs> put it on YouTube and then I'll get it. So we're beginning to catch up on that. We have to go out and look for and find and take a look at and try and learn from new stuff like Ryan's done, new stuff like you saw Lady Lich and Little Dallas doing. That's what, the, what we've been asking you to consider at this conference. We identified two projects, each of which addresses a really serious life issue and does it in ways that are working. I found myself bopping when Ryan's um, pieces were on and smiling because even when they were kind of having a go at Gutmacker, it was funny. And the way the imagery bopped all the, the statistics up, it was funny as well as being serious. That's that's how do you get open a person's heart? You might try and make them smile. That's why I've got a joke book. What's arresting about each of these campaigns is the imaginative way in which they're presented and developed, and the way they engage the moral imagination and the sense of justice on people of different sides of the argument. That's what we want to do. It's wonderful for you to be here, and thank you for being here. We had an earlier meeting. Uh, I always have two meetings a day, so that I don't get any breakfast. Um, people are always complaining that I, I'm basically too large. And I told them I'm comfortable with my body. It's plenty of room. Um, but we have got to reach out to people who don't agree with us. And what better way to do it than to present an issue when you are by listening to one, you couldn't help saying that's outrageous. That's wrong. It's just simply wrong. I don't care, and that I'm with you. That's what we want to get that effect from people. And these these imagery and this these uses of imagery show us that great things are possible and offer clear and attractive examples for us to learn from. We know in Ireland from years of opinion polling asking exactly the same questions that the majority still share our core values. We're not quite sure, sure why they do, but because they do. And that's astonishing. And I hope you will find much in this evening's presentation to chew on. I'm, I'm, I'm encouraging here rumination. Let us have, I usually wear cow ties to this, these events to encourage rumination, but I'm, I'm wearing a more um, subdued one because I thought. Uh, so, to assist us in this task of learning how better to present and propose and project our vision of a culture of equal respect for human life at risk, this is why we asked Ryan and Bethany and Reggie and um, Senator Ronan. I don't know if I was going to embarrass Ronan by talking about the essay called. Uh, the, the, oh, he's down there. I'm now going to embarrass you, Ronan. <laughs> <coughs> there was a great thing in the in the if you if you Google. Notes from a Dragon Mum. And it's about uh, Emily Rapp. And Emily Rapp has uh, a baby boy uh, called Ronan, which means little C in Irish, she said. And he has Tay Sachs. So he's expected to be dead before he is three. And she was talking about how it changed the perspective you have as a parent, because normally a parent is thinking about. We'll have to have more apples because when you grow up, you'll be able to jump over the house. And she realized that what she has to do is to love the person next to her, her little morsel, in the present moment. And that's what it is. It's a magnificent essay. There was a similar essay by Bill Muhlenberg. I don't know whether you know Bill Muhlenberg, talking about um, 
the, the, effectively the, the threat of genocide against uh, effectively Down syndrome children because there's a new test making it more easy to identify them. And he was saying, is there something wrong with our culture when we're zapping people who are imperfect? Because in effect, we are all imperfect and we only become spiritually, personally better by loving one another, especially the ones that are more vulnerable. So those essays are pouring out. This is a magnificent time to be pro-life. Just two books I would mention to you. Um, Christopher Kayser has an amazing defense of the right to life of the unborn, arguing, showing that anybody who argues against um, respecting all human life ends up allowing killing more people than they thought they would. It's called the um, Ethics and Justice and Women's Rights. And um, our own Brendan Purcell from Ireland has a book called From the Big Bang to the Big Mystery, in which he gives you um, a stunning exploration and build up of what it is to be a human being in body and in spirit, and why we are human being right from the beginning. So those, again, are two big cultural um, foundation stones that are going down at the moment. So the, we are at a time when the, the tide is turning. The high tide, King Alfred cried, the high tide and the turn. That's where we are at the moment. I'd like to thank Reggie and Ryan and Bethany for helping us to make that turn and to do better what we're already trying to do now. I'd like to thank Barry and Stephanie and I'd like to thank everybody here, William and, uh, and Jimmy and all of you. It's just, to me, standing at the top, it's fantastic to know that there are so many of you out there doing so many things. I came here to say two words, thank you, and more importantly, help. Whatever you're doing, I want you to do more of it. Okay? Thank you very much.